ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel. And today I have something very special for all of you. Today I am doing a ranking video. It's been a while since I've done a ranking video. So yeah, if you guys have followed me since the inception of this channel, I've done a lot of cool ranking videos in the past. But of course, I'm known as the Action Sunday guy, but I'm going to change gears briefly. And I want to talk about comedy. So uh, yeah, let's talk about that for a moment. Because everyone, everyone's obviously grown up listen, listening to some favorite comedian or some comedy comedic sketch on TV, everyone's seen SNL, all that great stuff. But if you, but if anyone had to ask you, ask you what was there, what, what was your favorite comedian or was there any influential comedians on your life growing up? For me, there was two people. One was Rob Williams and the other is the guy I'm talking about today and that is John Candy. Oh yes, if, if you were an 80s and 90s kid kid back then, you would know who this man, man is, okay? Uh, he is, people have listed him as possibly one of the best Canadian co actors and comedians of his day. And it's a damn shame, shame he left us so soon because, uh, man, man, like there's something about John Candy that makes us all fall in love with him and we still talk about it but to this day so yeah it's and of course i feel feel bad i've been doing a disservice for a long time so i think it's about time that me i want to talk about some of my favorite john candy roles and movies okay so that's what i'm going to do today okay and of course believe it or not this video is also going going out to my my uh, fellow uh john candy fan, fan club so uh, anybody you guys are uh, tuning in so uh yeah yeah i hope i do, do this guy justice but a little disclaimer folks for any any John Candy fans out there there are a few movies of his that I have not seen so there will be a few that will not make this list so but there are a few honorable mentions that I do want to get out of, the, out of the gate right now and the first one is Irv from Cool Runnings um I've only seen this movie maybe like uh, maybe like a small handful of times and yes i know it's pretty much like the story of the jamaican bobsled team and of course he plays irv who was supposedly like one of the best uh he was supposedly their coach who was one of the best bobsledders that kind of thing it's an interesting it's an interesting take and possibly one of the i think a first disney movie that he's worked on i to my knowledge um so yeah not my bread butter but may over time may i'll fall in love with it but hey john Kenny in a good role and a most focal part of the entire movie alongside the jamaican guys um, another one is, of course, um, uh, Danny Muldoon from Only the Lonely, uh, cause, uh, yeah, Spores had, had, um, there's only, there's another rom com that's gonna make my list, but this one just barely made the cut. I've only seen this movie maybe two or three times. Maybe eventually it'll grow on me. Um, I understand he's like, he's a cop that's trying to fall in love, meets Ali She. So it's one of those, oh, it's one of those, um, John Hughes kind of, kind of things. Uh, but, but hey, maybe, like I said, it, the romance is there. Not my favorite role of his, but he does get a nod, nod because, hey, hey, at least John Candy tries because there's some sweet, harmonious m m m moments throughout that movie. And of course, I gotta give another, another tip of the hat to the Polka King of the Midwest from Home Alone, even though it's a small, small part of the movie, but still, we, I just loved him. I just, nerd out because hey it's john candy he's a he's a he's in home alone kind of thing and of course hey bill bill reunion between him and Macaulay Culkin, even though they don't share scenes but hey you get the point but anyway let's get down down to business right to the ranking come in at number 10 dewey ox oxberger from stripes Yes, I'm just going to start off this list with a with a good one, a banger from 1981. If anybody has never seen Stripes, Stripes, this com this comedy classic classic is the first dynamic pairing of of director Ivan Reitman and Harold Ramis, who also wrote and starred in this movie. So yeah, come on, this was years before uh, Ghostbusters, but ha has this one hold up? To me, it does, because even though the focus is more on Bill Murray's character, but John Candy's character totally adds to the to the uh, to the crazy ensemble cast of all these down their luck men or 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 guys with each of them with their intro their intricate quirks trying to get make make in life you know they want to join the army they want to do something with their life and i, I like dewey oxberger because he's he's kind of funny but at the same time he has a little bit of a short fuse because according to him he's like um hey i'm hey i'm I'm, hey, hey, it's free, as he says. He wants to join, but even though he, though he only butts heads a few times with uh, uh, Bill Murray's character and Howard Anderson's character, but he's still like a good character. It's just great to see what he does. Because, <laughs> but hey, hey, it's like you. It's I love this kind of character trope. Like I say, he's got a bit of a short fuse, but at the same time, he's also the the the, the guy that you just love to be around. Right? And I think he I think John Candy kind of blends a little bit of both those worlds with this character. And and like I said, said even though he's just part of the background among the other crazy. Or type of cut types like uh, or or character ensemble like Francis the Psycho, uh, but still you got still he's a great member of this of this of the whole platoon as I call it. 
Coming at number nine, Frank Dooley from Armed and Dangerous. Um, now, disclaimer, I've only seen this movie maybe three or four times, and every time I see this, I just can't help but laugh because this is probably one of the first, if to my knowledge, their first dynamic pairing of John Candy and Eugene Levy. And yes, these guys just totally work. And the, if anybody's never heard of Armed and Dangerous, this one's, it, it's, it's interesting. It's like, it's like a pseudo buddy cop kind of thing, but except Eugene Levy was a, an ex lawyer who gets kicked out of his job. There's a whole crazy art bunch of shit. And he and, he and John Kane's character have to team up to take down some corruption among the department, in the police department. It's crazy. But of course, at the same time, I'm like, wait a minute. The plot, some of the, some of these archetypes and plots kind of sound vaguely similar to a, to a similar movie that came out almost what, 30 years later? I think you might have heard of it. It's called National Treasure with, I mean, not National Treasure, National Security with, uh, Martin Lawrence, May Bells. So yeah, same kind of thing. Well, different, different recipe, but this one I really enjoyed because, um, how can I say this? I don't know if this, I don't know if anybody's noticed this, but I feel like the straight man persona kind of bounces back and forth between Eugene Levy's character and John Kane's character. It's like one scene, oh, the straight guy will be Eugene Levy. Then the next, then another scene, see, it will be John Kane. It kind of, it does work, and it brings such a joyful smile to my face. And my favorite scene. It seen is like near the end when John Key is just trying to hitch a ride to save his to save Eugene Levy, and of course somehow hitches a ride with a cowboy, and he goes, and of course he's like, like okay, so okay, so I'm, let's get it. He goes, oh boy, I hope you know what you're doing. Then he whips out the gun, and of course you know that this, this gun's illegal in two different states. This ain't one of them. I'm like, oh my god. Way to, way to do that. And another fight, funny moment that also brought a smile to my face is, of course, oh my God, I caught a shark. <laughs> I was downright laughing with that scene. If anybody, and seriously, you know what scene I'm talking about. You, if anybody has never seen Armed and Dangerous, give this movie a watch. You'll, you'll laugh your ass off. Coming in at number eight, uh, Freddie Bauer from Splash. Ne this next one's going to be an interesting one. It's like, not a rom-com, but here's the thing. John, John Candy is more of a supporting character, kind of like in Stripes. But, but the focus here in this plot, in the plot of this movie, is more on Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. Tom Hanks plays uh, plays Alan Bauer, who's like he's an importer slash exporter. That's, they work in the, in the New York, on, on the New York Bay or Harbor kind of thing. And somehow he falls in love with this mysterious woman who is Daryl Hannah. But unbeknownst to him is that she's a she's a mermaid. It's a bit of a rom com, a little bit of fantasy elements thrown in there. John Candy, even though like like I said, even though he plays, even though he's a supporting character, he does when he works when his character is on screen, he kind of steals the spotlight. And of course, uh, he's a, his character is like how I say this. Well, even though some parts of the, of Freddy don't wouldn't fly in today's society because his, his character is a bit of a womanizer, but he does have some very funny moments of the movie. Like, uh, like there's a moment where where like uh, Alan's getting pre pre getting pestered by the press. He steps in and goes, "Okay, all right, listen, we will listen, We're not going to talk to anyone unless if, if anybody here is from Penthouse Magazine." They're like, "No." We're not talking. They just walk away. It's like great, great timing on on that. But hey, hey, like I said, like John, when John Candy's character just totally brings it, it really works. And also, here's something interesting: is that this is both John Candy's second teaming, both with with Tom Hanks and Eugene Levy, because both Eugene because both these guys are in the movie. Eugene Levy plays a nerd guy, even though he's a bit of a villain. I don't want to give too much away, but but uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. This is it's really cool just to see like a bit of a reunion between these three characters and they just work okay and and seriously the chemistry between hanks and candy are, are, are just fantastic and of course even though i have not seen the volunteers which again don't please don't hate me fan, john candy fan club uh, i will get to it eventually but uh, may, maybe maybe that character will grow on me that movie will grow on me well, well who knows but they they have it uh, have it but still Freddie bauer good good character coming at number seven Wilbur from Rescuers Down Under. Now I know what you're all thinking. Wait, you're putting a, an animated entry on this list? Well, to be fair, fair, I was bouncing back and forth between this and another, one of my honorable mentions, but but I feel like this one in comics list because because I would never expect John Kane to play a voiceover character. And 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 not and, and here's an interesting thing is that this is the Rescuers. This is possibly one, the most criminally Underrated and overlooked sequel in the history of Disney cinema. I bet, and it's just a damn shame because it's a great movie. Uh, and movie, and just and what's crazy is that this movie came out 
a decade plus after the first Rescuers movie. And like they were able to get, uh, um, you know, the, um, Bob Newhart and Ava Gabor to reprise their roles as Bernard and, and Bian Bianca. And of course, having him play Wilbur, I think was a perfect foil because uh, yeah, um, if anybody's never seen the, the uh, Rescuers, the whole reason of Wilbur's character is that he's actually the younger brother of the other albatross that was in the first movie, Sally. The voice director for that guy he passed away. So they had to get around, okay, what can we do, do to get around of uh, replacing him? They said, oh, let's make, create a new character. Well, here's Wilbur, the albatross. And he definitely works. And I can't help but smile but that every time that every, that this character, when this character speaks or has a good part of the movie, I can't help but smile and realize I could totally see John Kane just per presence, just ooze into this character. And that's a mark of a good voice actor and a good actor in general. And I, and even though, like I said, it's a more supporting character, but you just gotta love this character. You love this character and possibly one of the most criminally underrated movies ever in the history, in the Disney catalog. Coming at number six, Chet Ripley. Yeah, baby. We're talking gray outdoors now. And sports head, this one of one of two family vacation movies that are going to make my list. I, I will get into a future one later on. But this one is just is just bonkers. Because here, John Candy plays plays a family man, Chet Ripley, who's essentially taking his family up to, up to the lake. It's like his family tradition. And of course, what could go wrong? Well, let's see. And... Enter Ro his brother-in-law, Roman. Yes, him and his family, his sister. And, of course, he, he can tolerate his sister, but it's his brother-in-law that's so obnoxious. But the, And, of course, Dan Aykroyd's uh, pairing with with John Candy is just perfect all around. And it really does. And I kind of find it funny is that, like, I think it was a last, last night or the other night, Great Outdoors was playing. I couldn't help but laugh and smile. Just out, just looking back, it's like these two were a criminally underrated like duo in the history of comedy. I, I, it's a damn shame because I really wish they could have worked on more movies together. Who knows what they could have done? And they kind of let the door door open for a sequel in the end. But I just loved love both their their work to this movie. And whether it's um you know them just having a good time in the lake or having a barbecue or fishing, like it's it's the perfect typical family comedy that I don't think that if you've never seen you gotta give it a watch because it's that entertaining coming at number five barf from space balls come on i gotta give love to barf why the hell not you can come come on he's half man half dog he's my own best friend you gotta love him love him i just really enjoy this movie and the fact that that he just really fits in with the mel brooks universe especially space balls is just the perfect thing he's the perfect foil to bill pullman's lone star and they those two just work pretty damn well together and i also find it interesting is that that the cool makeup effects with him being the mog the half man half dog with the controllable ears which is interesting he was actually able to control it just from, from a remote in his glove and and that's that's dedication to the craft, even though it's a unique thing to just make, oh, how can we make this half dog character work? And there you go. That's how you do it. And John Kenny really took it with stride and he worked it to perfection. And it's a damn shame that we're we're gonna get a space ball sequel and he's not in it. But I hope they do some kind of love to him. Who knows? Okay. I I again, again, you gotta love Barf in space balls. <laughs> Coming at number four, Harry Crumb from Who's Harry Crumb? Now, if anybody has never seen Who's Harry Crumb, this guy, this is like the equivalent of, this is like John Kane's equivalent of Fletch. Fletch, you know, Chevy Chase's, uh, com comedic outing, his most, di di his most famous work, work. Side note, if you've never seen any of those Fletch movies, go find them. I really enjoyed this because this was, this was the first John Kane movie that I ever saw as a young kid. So sorry. So yeah, um, I kind of walked in and I was like, ooh, what movie is this? And of course I was laughing my ass off. But of course there was definitely some adult content that would maybe go, oh boy, did not see that coming. And there's so many quote moments and lines from this movie. And I still watch it to this day because, hey, oh, come on, this was, this was a pretty fun movie. And this is the fact that this was John King's first time outing as a producer in his movies. And it's a damn shame that this movie flopped. I really could have seen, seen this like get picked up and get like another sequel in the same way, like kind of like with Chevy Chase and the Fletch movies. But, but no, I felt like, I felt like, uh, you know, the poor, the poor, the poor flops at the box office. But you can't, but I, again, I don't discount anything like that. You just gotta look at, at the story is that it's just, entertaining and John Candy totally brings it and there there's just I, I wish I could write a book of some of my favorite moments that happens throughout this movie and kind of makes me wonder hey maybe I should be a private eye someday 
future future uh, career opportunity. Who knows? <laughs> comment number three, Jack Chester from Summer Rat Rental. This is the other family comedy that I, met, that I mentioned. And, uh, and of course, I'm going to say this right now. This one gets a bit of a personal bias because I've seen this movie so many times. My family owns it. I make a tradition to watch it every summer. And it never gets old. I just love it because... My goodness, I always picture myself, it's like, that's us. That's my family. We would go down the shore and have a good time. And even though things wouldn't go right, well, but it wouldn't be as outlandish like this John Candy movie, where it's like uh, him trying to teach his son how to sail, or a, or a bunch of rowdy people uh, turning, turning his house into a party uh, house kind of thing, or him m making some, making some, how I say it, Bunny heads with a, with a popular guy in town, you know, the guy that hates tourists. Which, side note, Richard Cran was Perfect for Captain Al Pellet. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. There's a great handful of, of great actors in this movie, including a young young Joey Lawrence who plays his son, which is crazy. I'm like, wow, you look at the star power here. And they have Rip Torn as Scully, the owner of the Barnacle, the, the restaurant slash ship, which, it, which of course he gets gets the, as part of the as a latter part of the movie when it goes into the regatta and that that part i really enjoyed okay or just watching him it's there's like we're not i think this is the first movie to my knowledge where there's two montages of him of train montages or or like a working montage there because they're first he's trained how to sail then there's a work a building montage of him trying to fix a boat and all to the tune of a jimmy buffett song which is Perfect. And that's what puts it over the top for me. And that's why I love this movie. You have never seen a good family comedy unless you've seen this movie. I encourage anybody who who's never seen this movie. Okay, give it a watch. Coming at number one and number two, I'm gonna lump these together because it's been a coin coin flip for both these positions. Um so I'm gonna lump them together. Gare, at this at the number one, number two spot. It's going to be Del Griffith from Plains, Trains, and Automobiles, and then and, and Uncle and Buck Russell from Uncle Buck. I just love both these characters because, to me, I you get I I was having a hard time picking one over the other because they're both good movies in their own rights, and they're both timeless, quotable classics, not just from a John Candy perspective, but from a his, from from pop culture's perspective, because because how many people have ever quoted some of those lines from Plain Streets and Automobiles, like "Oh, my dogs are burning," or "You, oh, you're the one that took my cab," or "Or where's my or, or where's my other hand between these pillows? Those aren't pillows." <laughs> oh my goodness! I seriously between that and of course, but and of course his time can make time and uh, Uncle Buck, you know, oh Buck Bellanova and all that, and him fighting the fighting the clown and all that. There's so many great things. I can't just pick one or the other because they're so good. I and that's what to me just makes me just love and humanizes any character that John Candy does. It's like, and and I really wish again. I, I hate to sound like a broke record. I really wish that he could have stuck around more because I really would love to see like, oh, what would have happened after the Uncle Buck movie, or what would happen after the ending of ending of Plain Strings and Automobiles? Like, would there be some some more to this character? Like, I would love to see what he would do. Like, uh, yeah, it's crazy to think about about all that. It's like, oh, but but here's something interesting: is that the Plain Strings and Automobiles is part of the John Hughes shared universe. If that makes any sense, hello. Uh, we've got Ferris Bueller's father in the courtroom in the court in the in the boardroom scene. They have have Kevin Bacon's character from she's having a baby. It's all there. It's crazy to think about. Maybe they should should gone gone a little deeper there. Who knows? But either way, um, those two roles I put at the very top. And you just gotta you, you can't you can't you can't hate you can't hate these two characters. You just love them for what they are. Okay. So yeah, there, so there you go. Those are my picks and my favorite movie roles and movies of John Candy. Again, I really, really wish he was still around today because I'm like he's really left the mark of my life. And of course, if he was still alive today, I just want to give him a hug because he he I I just because he was just perfect on my childhood between him and Robin Williams. And it's a damn shame they're not around. And we there's not I don't think there's any comedian that will ever match a candle to John Candy's legacy. All right. So that does it for today. I want to hear your picks, your favorite John Candy movie roles, or or, and, or or John Candy movies in general. Okay, so that does it for today. Thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for some more awesome and exciting videos.